Hello everyone, it's Kay here and I'm here today to do the tutorial that inspired me to make this lovely little project. I will link the original tutorial that inspired me below which was BB's Crafts here on YouTube but I have been requested to do the tutorial as well so here we go. I have tried to do as much preparation as I could beforehand so you'll need to bear with me but essentially you need cardstock of quite a good quality, designer paper, some kind of embellishment depending on what you're going to put on the front of your little gift cards, an envelope board or you can do it by measuring and using um, a bit of sponge like this, it will do the same thing as long as you can score into it and define your lines very very clearly. So for the sleeve of the little box holder you need a piece of card stock that is 10 inches by 4, oops, 4 and 3 quarters. You then, once you've cut that out, Put it to your scoreboard and you score at four and a half and five and a half and that's all you need to do for the sleeve that holds your little holder together and once you've done that you score, burnish and fold your score lines really really sharply and you can actually put this aside until later and you can also put your school board away because you won't need that again for a little while. The next thing we need whoops, is the envelope school board because the thing that makes the box are these little card envelopes and they're envelope boxes so they've got a lovely little spine here easily achieved on the envelope so we'll just put that out of the way and to make your envelopes and this is for this size clearly you can juggle it make it larger if you want to um, you need a piece of card stock that is seven and three eighths by seven and three eighths just the proverbial square which you then put to your scoreboard and your first score has to be at three and a half on the scoreboard so you've got your inches over here as we know so you put it into place score down and punch then you move it along to the four inch which gives you a half inch whoops oops losing it a half inch all the way around and then matching those lines you continue to do the same thing around oh gosh around your piece of card and again I always do the outside line first and then slide over and punch again. You see you've got this regular gully all the way around and punch and while I'm here I will round the corners because that's what I like to do and already you can see your little pocket it goes beyond an envelope at this point taking shape I'll just move that out of the way then you need your scissors and these little bits once you've burnished and folded on all the score lines Oops. this is what gives you the area that you need to trim out on your box and it does make it easier if you've done all the scoring I hope you can see in this light so what we endeavour to do is cut out that tiny tiny little bit here 
in each of the corners. Try and line up your lines very nicely. You don't have to do any notching or anything of that nature. If it's a little bit off, don't worry about it because it's all in the nature of the scores and you might just have to trim down a little bit and cut out the entire score mark but don't let that phase you because at the end of the day this is the box that is going to keep everything together so once you've done that you then go to construct your envelope box just by folding it in on itself as you would if it was a paper envelope now because this amounts to two different sizes you need to make see if I show you there if I put them together there is a difference so you have to turn your folds around I never do this right until you've got two identically shaped boxes facing the same direction before you put it all together so that is it now what I'm going to do for the sake of the video is use my red tape to put it all together because if we wait for glue we'll be waiting a while I'm just going to leave out the top bit which will be proud at the top there and just add my red tape to the sides of the flap that are going to go back over I will pop another little bit of the red tape into this bit here just so that it's all really tidy and held together nicely before I bring the sides up and you do need to try and line up and make sure that it is nicely put together because any overlaps at this point when you come to put it onto the base of your box will become very evident. So you bring that up nicely, keep your sides in line as much as possible and then just bring those edges together and it really is as simple as that to put your envelope box where you need it to be so that's very straightforward up to that point I think not the cutting edge on my envelope of the corner bit is getting a bit tired but I do use this relentlessly <laughs> I really do so then you go back to your um, original sleeve which is very very straightforward now I have as you can see put paper clips in place here and that is purely because I've already cut out my DSP mats so that said the spine area here if I can find my little notes you need two for the spine at seven eighths by four and seven eighths and that just leaves a nice little border inside the um, spine of your little booklet so I'll just I think I'll use my um, silicon I'll just anchor that down in place because that makes everything else a whole lot easier and you really do just line it up, place it down, wipe away any excess as you would do with any of your favourite glue. You can use the red line tape, it's entirely up to you. But here begins the decoration of your little booklet. Now making sure, I've got a little something in there already, come out, making sure that your envelopes are centered nicely avoiding score lines you anchor these into the sleeve of the box but before I'm going to do that I've actually done templates oops if I get them out of this piece of the envelope box and all that entailed was laying my 
if I show you on this bit, laying my um, the top of my envelope down like this and then drawing around it and then cutting off a little bit extra, just enough to avoid the score line and that makes a wonderful little cover for this part of your envelope. So before we actually put it into the um, sleeve, I like to just put that down like so, avoiding the score lines. If there is a nice little bit of edging around it, so be it. If I haven't got an, cut enough off, then you can always measure and do that prior to actually gluing it down and you do that on both of these flaps. It really is such a lovely lovely project to put together. It doesn't take too long. It would be wonderful for um, fairs, teachers gifts, all the usual things, thank you gifts, because it is not heavy on um, ingredients as I call them and they don't take an awful lot of time to put into being so when it's opened my flaps of the envelope then match the spine as I hope you can see. The next thing to do is anchor these down into, onto, beg your pardon, onto the sleeve. So I'm going to use my trusted Yoohoo again purely because it works for me every time. It's not everyone's cup of tea but I really do like it. I think it's um, one of these glues that you can trust. And apart from the smell, <coughs> excuse me, which can make you a little bit happy if you're in an enclosed environment, I have to say. Um, you know, it, it really is a good glue. It dries clear, you've got wiggle room, but as I say, you use what suits you. Take your um, tool and just burnish that down flat. A, to spread the glue around if you've used wet glue, but also utilise it to make sure that all the surfaces are really, really nicely anchored down because this is the actual mainstay now of your little gift and then that folds over like so. So you can see how it's going. This is why you need your inch spine here because you want to be able to put it together Oh, excuse me and um, make sure that there's no crushing of the spines on your little envelope boxes. The same on the other side and I do tend to take it right to the corners. I do want them to be anchored down very very nicely so that they um, do what they've got to do without causing any problems or lifting at a later date try and line up with the other envelope so that you are nicely matched and at this point that's quite easily done you don't have to fret because you know it, it really is just lining up the bottoms here so that the lip matches and again at the top so that you've got nothing there um, that looks untoward. It all looks very neat once you've opened it up. Burnish again to make sure that all the surfaces are nicely stuck down and in a safe and happy place. There's nothing worse than things lifting when you go to pick out whatever is inside them. <coughs> oh, I do beg your pardon. So that's those two now done and as you can see once they are put together you have a very very nice little box that is just going to hold whatever you want to put in it. Now if you have 
a good quality DSP, then you needn't use cardstock for your envelopes. That's obvious. You could make your envelopes immediately from the DSP and it would save you this stage. But there is something about using this, use it, using and doing it this way because it, you do end up with a very, very sturdy product at the end of end of the day you can decorate the bottom you can decorate the whole bottom of the box it's entirely up to you but I quite like the look of the decorated flaps they're plain inside and the only thing I do to anchor these down is use velcro dots and that works really nicely in all honesty it's non-essential because once it's put together, gravity and so on will make it be where it needs to be and it will hold those flaps down. But I think for that extra little something, it just does add a bit more of a, a polished project to the mix. Now, all we have to do is lay our DSP down on the back and because the boxes now are there and they're drying, this is a nice little platform to work on. You don't have to be concerned about crushing it as long as you're not too heavy handed. So here is my second little bit of spine. What did I say it was? Seven eighths by four and seven eighths. And that just slots in there really nicely. And then your mats for the back and front cover are four and a quarter by four and a half and they just sit there really really nicely so again it's about gluing them down nicely and securely take that glue right to the edge avoid your score lines as always and just lay that down measure it up with your spine make sure your borders are as equal as you can get them. Gently smooth that in. I'm not going to use my um, little bone folder there. I think using hands is enough at this stage. And then put on the other side. I've already rounded corners. Again, that's a personal choice thing, but it's what I like to do. I think it just is a nice, nice touch. And I'm going to lay that down again, lining up with my spine so everything looks really, really nicely placed and where it needs to be. No glaring holes or gaps or lines. It's nice to have the opportunity to move that around. And there is your little sleeve decorated it's it really is that straightforward you've got your envelope boxes inside so the next thing we have to make and I'll move that out of the way is our belly band now because I've used a four card I, I didn't have the whole length to play with to make my belly band so going back to my destructions here um, your belly band is one and a half inches by eight times two. So you want two of these to make sure that they wrap around the um, sleeve and the box very nicely. I have scored at one inch on both sides, as you can see. Put down my red tape because that is my little bit of choice for this bit. I will add a little bit of the Yoohoo as well, primarily because I want it to really anchor well and not give any problems. Then I will overlap that, making sure that my score lines are visible because I quite like, if, if you can't have a clear run at something, I want this area to look as though it's meant to be rather than um, an afterthought or a, or a gluing together. And that forms your 
um, belly band. It's up to you then whether you decorate it, do a punched edge on it, put your DSP on it like I, well I didn't on this one, I used a piece of ribbon, but decorate it at this stage to wherever you want it to be. Then you bring back in your whole box, which now has been given time to settle. Put your one inch spine in the middle as far as you're able. Let's do it this way. Okay. Then I just mark a little bit here and I mark a little bit there with my fingernail and try to freehand just fold it over. One, there's my mark, and two, and burnish, fold up my box. That is my back spine, so there is the area on the score lines, and that join doesn't disappear, but it doesn't shout either. And then you just put that onto, no, no, I've told you wrong. Make sure that that bit goes in the centre at the back. Sorry, ladies. You can do it that way if you want to. And then we're going to fold again, make that bit there. Make a little crease at the bottom there to bring it over. Now we've got far too much. We don't need all of that. So using the little press marks that you made, fold it. It's better to fold it freehand because at this stage the little pockets are empty. And if you want to put extra things in besides some cards or what have you, you do need a bit of flexibility with your belly band pop it back on again and I do all of this by eye really I don't want it it doesn't have to be absolutely spot on you want it to be tidy you want it to hold nicely so I put it a bit askew like this um, pencil is that one? Oh yeah and I will just mark there and mark on the top one and I will then trim off those pieces just by hand. It's a lap over situation again so you know you're not going to be seeing too much of it and your front decoration will go over that. So that comes around like so. I'll put my little bit of Uzi Hoozy onto that, avoiding my little score marks as always. Hold that down. And hopefully, I've not lied to you, this will fit nicely. Oops, a daisy. Come on, anchor. This will fit nicely around. Make sure your flaps are at the right way. Bring this in, slide it over the edge like so, and then just bring it down so that it's where it needs to be. And I'm just going to give that a second or two to settle. Go around the back nicely, nicely. I would also put a little decoration on the back there or just for you a sentiment, something like that. And now I have my um, embellishment to go on the front and that covers any, um, any little score lines or anything. And all I've done here is utilised my stamping up daisy. Clearly you can use any flower ribbon, whatever you like. If you're doing um, flowers, do emboss them on the back, make them curl over, turn them over and press them down so that you get a living shape, not something that is flat and not very interesting. 
and then I've put two layers of the gold and the, the main DSP and I've just put a little pearl drop on the back like so and I think that is really very very effective. I'm not going to use um, any ribbon or anything this time because in actuality the flowers are so decorative you don't need to do a whole lot more to the belly band. So that will fit like that and then somewhere mm -hmm, can't find them I've got some cut out little tiny hearts and what I would do is just put one either side of the flower and that is your envelope gift box ready to go from the um, excesses and cut off bits of card I've gone on to make four cards and that is where you use up a great deal of your leftovers especially from your DSP and that kind of thing because there are always little bits left over this is the paper pack I used it is very very old but very very pretty and it is a really good I can't remember what the GSM is on it but it is really really good very very thick for your I've just found the hearts and these two I've embossed but I would put one there and one there and that would be my belly band finished in total apart from perhaps something on the back the cards measure back to my notes again uh, oh dear spine back front cover small cards three and a half by seven inches opened out that way so that's three and a half by seven score at three and a half fold and burnish round your corners I always line my cards it's what I've always always done and all I do is take some copier paper measure it up with the card put some double sided tape on the back take it up to the score line but not on it and then put those down like so so you've got a nice little area to write in or stamp or do whatever you like the mat for these clearly is a little bit less than the actual card size so it's three and a quarter by three and a quarter and this is where you get to have all your extras left over from your previous make I've got four there I won't make them all because you don't need to see all of that but that is the layer put down on the card again you're leaving your border you've got your insert inside and because I had stuff left over from cutting out my card DSP I went on to make more of my little um, daisy embellishments put the pearl in the center so what you see on the front becomes what is inside the card and you just lay that down in the center you can put a sentiment on it you can leave it plain some little bling in the corners it's entirely up to you but I made two each of these and they're all in keeping I'll just do this one as well so you can see it's all in keeping with the coloured paper on the front which is what you'd expect if you used card and papers from a given paper stack add that onto the front slide make sure you've got your um, border around here's my other little daisy made up of the blue and the pink a bit in the centre lay it down in the centre and then all that's left to do is to make the envelopes 
to go with your little cards and that is the whole set as it stands and it really is so pretty so effective these then fit beautifully into your envelope box as you can see and you could actually put all your cards in one side if you wanted to and a little gift on the other it is entirely up to you as the individual to put your own stamp on your work so I hope that's been helpful I hope it hasn't been too drawn out Thank you for sharing this time with me. Take care, everyone. Have a great bank holiday weekend to those in the UK. Bye-bye for now and happy crafting.